In this video, you'll see how to add together two floating point binary numbers. It assumes you can already convert numbers from base 10 to floating point binary for a given sized mantissa and exponent, both in 2's complement. It also assumes that you can normalise floating point binary numbers. Before we see some examples, let's consider the same process in base 10. Here are two base 10 numbers in standard scientific form. Because the exponents are the same, we can simply line up the decimal points of the mantissas and add them together. The results will have the same exponent as the original numbers. Here's another example, but this time the exponents don't match. We can't simply add the mantissas together. First, we have to adjust one of the exponents to match the other. In this case, we're making the smaller exponent match the larger one. Because that would make the number bigger, ten times bigger in this case, we need to compensate by moving the decimal point to the left. Now that the exponents are the same, just like last time, we can line up the decimal points in the mantissas and simply add the numbers together. The result has the same exponent as the two numbers we've added. In this example, the exponents don't match either, so we make the smaller exponent match the larger one, just like last time. We line up the mantissas and add them together. And here's the result. But this time, the result isn't normalised. In standard scientific form, there should be only one digit before the decimal point, so we need to move the point one place to the left, and increase the exponent by one to compensate. Here's a summary of the recipe that we need to follow. Make sure that both numbers are normalised. Make the exponents the same. Add the mantises together. And then, if necessary, normalise the result. So let's see some examples in binary. Here's the problem. Show how you would add these two binary numbers together. Both numbers are in floating point binary format using 6 bits for the mantissa and 4 bits for the exponent, both in 2's complement. Show your result in the same format. We start by separating the exponents from the mantissas, just so we can see what we've got, and then we can convert the exponents into base 10. Now we make the exponents the same. We're making the smaller one the same as the larger one, in fact. Because we've increased the exponent from 2 to 3, we need to move the point to the left. In reality, what we're doing is moving all of the bits to the right. This is a right shift. Now that the exponents are the same, we can add the mantises together. Here's our result. The result is already normalised, so we're there. Now let's double check it. The first number, when we work it out, is 4. The second number is 2.25, so we're expecting a result of 6.25. Here's 6.25 in pure binary. And when we normalise that, we find we have the same result. It checks out. Let's see another example. Show how you would add these two numbers together. Both numbers are in floating point binary format, but this time we're using 8 bits for the mantissa and 4 bits for the exponent, both in 2's complement. So let's just quickly restate the problem. We'll convert the exponents into base 10 so we can see what we've got, and clearly they don't match. We're going to increase the smaller exponent to match the larger one. This means we need to move the point 5 places to the left to increase the exponent by 5. In reality, we're doing a right shift. The binary point stays in the same place. All the bits move 5 places to the right. Now the exponents are the same, we can add the mantises together. And here's our result. And as you can see, the result is already normalised. Let's double check it. The first number is 0.25. The second is 10.5. When we add those together, we are expecting 10.75. So here's 10.75 in pure binary. And when we normalise this, we find we have exactly the same result. It checks out. Let's see another example. 
show how you would add these two numbers together, we're back to 6 bits for the mantissa and 4 bits for the exponent. Both numbers are in 2's complement. So what are our exponents? We have an exponent of 4 and an exponent of 2. We're going to make the smaller one match the larger one. To do this, we increase it by 2 and float the point two places to the left. Or should I say, shift the bits two places to the right inside the register. Now, we can add the mantissas together. But notice that with only six bits for the mantissa, we run the risk of losing a couple of bits here. This is called a truncation error. When we add the mantissas together, we might not have the correct result. Let's work it through and see what we get. So here's our result. It is normalised. But let's double check it. The first number was 9. The second number was 2.25, so we're expecting a result of 11.25. Here's 11.25 in pure binary. When we normalise this, we don't have the result that we originally arrived at. You can see we can't represent 11.25 accurately with only 6 bits for the mantissa. We've lost a bit. When we convert the result that we calculated, we've only got 11. So we've lost some precision due to a truncation error during the process. Here's a couple for you to try yourself. Both examples are using 6 bits for the mantissa and 4 bits for the exponent, both in 2's complement. If you want to give them a go, pause the video now and I'll show you the solutions in just a moment. And here are the solutions. This is the first one. Here are our two numbers, but you might have noticed that the second number isn't normalised. We can't begin until we sort this out. So we're going to normalise the second number. We're moving the point one place to the right, and therefore we decrease the exponent. Now that the numbers are normalised, we can carry on as we've done before. We can see that the exponents don't match, and we have to increase the second one to match the first one. So we're floating the point to the left and increasing the exponent by 2. And you might be thinking, we could have taken a bit of a shortcut here, and you're right, we could have done. But the truth is that a computer will normally represent numbers in a normalised form. If we're going to emulate that process, we should start with two normalised numbers. But anyway, we've adjusted the exponents, Let's add the mantises together. Here's our result, with an exponent of 6, and our result is already normalised. Let's double check it. The first number was 40, the second was 10, so we're expecting 50. Here's 50 in pure binary, and when we normalise it, we can see that we get exactly the same result. It checks out. And let's look at the second example. Two numbers to add together, both numbers are already normalised, but we can see that the second number is actually a negative number. Take a look at the exponents. We need to increase the second exponent to match the first. So we do that by moving the point to the left and increasing the exponent by 1. Notice how we're keeping a leading 1. Because it was a negative number to start with, we need to make sure that it's a negative number still. Now, we can add the mantises together. We're getting a carry bit overflow when we do this, but don't worry about that, let's just carry on with the process and see what we get. Here's our result with an exponent of 3. We need to normalise it now, so we're moving the point two places to the right and decreasing the exponent by 2. And this is our final result. Let's double check it. The first number was 4.5. The second was minus 3.5. Add them together, we're expecting a result of 1. Here's 1 in pure binary, and when we normalise it, yep, it checks out. With 6 bits for the mantissa and 4 for the exponent, we've arrived at a result of 1. To summarise then, in order to perform any floating point arithmetic operation, a computer must first represent each number in a normalised form, within the limits of its precision. So even before we start, we could have a representation error. 
Then we have to make both exponents the same by denormalizing one of the numbers. In fact, we denormalize the smaller of the two numbers because, although we run the risk of a truncation error, we risk losing only the less significant bits from the right hand side of the mantissa. But you can imagine, if the two numbers differ widely in magnitude, then there's a danger that the smaller number will be shifted right out of the mantissa field. This will result in a mantissa of zero, so the sum of the two numbers will then be equal to just the larger number. Then we perform the addition operation. Needless to say, we've run the risk again of a representation error because of the finite precision of the mantissa field. Finally, we normalise the result if it isn't already normalised. At this stage, the number may be too big to be represented accurately, so we have an overflow error. If the normalised result is too small, then we get what's called an underflow error. Fortunately, with a modern processor, errors are actually quite rare. We use a lot more to represent the mantissa. In the next video, I'll show you how to subtract floating point binary numbers.